How are we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we welcome you to Heinz Field on a rainy Saturday night primetime football matchup as your Pitt Panthers play host to the number nine Penn State Nittany Lions. It's a revival of the Keystone State rivalry, as they're calling it now, a massive rivalry game that's now in its 99th appearance with the Panthers in the Nittany Lions meeting here at Heinz Field tonight. Penn State coming in very prolific offensively. Will the Panthers be able to do enough to shut them down and come away with their fourth straight victory in the series? Tune in to find out here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network. So we welcome you to Heinz Field as Penn State will kick the ball off and will get underway. Maurice French back to receive the ball for the Panthers. He'll start it out from about his four-yard line and return for about 20 yards to now near the 22-23. And the Panthers will start off with Kenny Pickett in the shotgun with Quadri Olsen to his right here in the shotgun formation. Pickett, of course, had his first start of his career in the last matchup for the Panthers as they beat UMass 42-14. A solid performance by Pickett. Managed the game very well. But now he gets his first true test here against the number nine Nittany Lions. And the Panthers start off very brightly. That's Olison for an eight-yard carry on second down. He's got 12 yards on two carries. And the Panthers have their opening first down. Penn State, very solid on both sides of the ball. But I think the big thing you know that they'll have is an explosive offense. Trace McSorley under center. Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders in the backfield. Some talented receivers as well in a very strong offensive line. And so the Panthers have to try and play solid. Hopefully the weather will be to their advantage advantage so that they don't have to get into a shootout here as the freshman Paul Lease takes a jet sweep for three yards setting up third and 11 now pick it in a four wide set here in the shotgun drops back plenty of time looking to pass and he sails that one behind Quadriolis and not even close you have to wonder how much of a factor the weather will play in the passing game today especially for Trace McSorley who will come out now after the Panthers punt 286 yards and three touchdowns through the air last game as he comes out in the shotgun with Saquon Barkley to his left two of the best players in the NCAA this year and he finds Irvin Charles for a nice catch in six yards before being brought down by sophomore Panther corner Kaiser Artist Scott. So second and four, it's McSorley in the shock, and we're going to expect to see a lot of that today, and it's Charles again beats the Panthers' nickel corner Philippi Motley, and that's a 35-yard catch and run for Irvin Charles, and Penn State is in business to the pit 23. McSorley back to pass again. Looks, that's Charles for his third straight catch on three straight plays. 16-yard grab, and it's first and goal for the Nittany Lions already from the Panthers' seven. McSorley back to pass. Motley comes off the edge, and McSorley goes down. Sacked by Philippi Motley. Great job coming in and bringing down McSorley. It's second and goal now from the Panthers' 13. Interesting formation there as McSorley hands off to Barkley. He finds plenty of space. He's into the back or into the secondary and into the end zone. That's Saquon Barkley with the touchdown. Unbelievable. Penn State marches right down the field and takes a 7-0 lead. So the Panthers have a lot of soul searching to do if they don't want this game to get out of hand very quickly. It's Pickett handing the ball off to Olison. He doesn't find any running room. No push from the Panthers offensive line. And it's going to be second and 10 now. Pickett in the I formation with, or excuse me, in the ace formation with Olison behind him. Back looks to pass and that's thrown behind Aaron Matthews this time. And Pickett not looking sharp here in the early going. 0 for 2 through the air. Shotgun now for Pickett with a bunch formation tight to his right. He's going to drop back. He's going to roll out. Chased down by a receiver. He forced to throw it, and he's got Aaron Matthews. Finds him for a beautiful catch and run. That's a 23-yard grab by the junior Matthews. Pickett rolled out. Matthews did a great job breaking off from his route and just finding some space. Pickett took a hit, but got it there, and that's a first down. Big third down conversion for the Panthers, setting up the ball near midfield. It's going to be Pickett handing off in the broken eye formation to Quadrioles and sheds a tackler into the second level, and that's a great 10-yard run for the senior halfback, and the Panthers have another first down at the Penn State 40. 
Pick in the shotgun now. It's going to hand the ball off to Olison, and the pursuit is relentless. He loses a yard there. No blocking, and it's going to be second and 11. Pick in the shotgun again with Olison next to him. It's a read option this time. Pickett tries to spin, and he loses a yard. Nowhere to go. Great tackle by Cameron Brown breaking into the backfield, and it's another third and long for the Panthers with Pickett in a five-wide set now in the shotgun on third and 12. He's going to drop back and look to pass. Pressure comes from the corner off the edge. He's able to sling the ball out front. Rafael Arujo lopes, but that's a nine-yard grab. Fourth and two for the Panthers, and they're going to go for it from the 32-yard line. It's a long field goal. They want to keep the ball moving. It's George Aston, the fullback, the redshirt senior. He's through for an 11-yard gain and a first down for the Panthers into the Penn State 26-yard line. Aston's now going to go in motion here on first down. It's a handoff to Olison. He's found space off to the right-hand side. Marches his way forward. A seven-yard gain. Quadri Olison doing a great job picking up some nice chunks for the Panthers here. Second and three as they're into the red zone. Read option for Pickett. He fakes the handoff. Instead, he's going to go forward here. Picks up about five and a Panthers first down. So, the Panthers making plays on third and fourth down when they need to, and it's now first and goal from the 10-yard. Play action. Pick it. Back to pass. Looks to the corner. He's found his man. That's freshman tight end Antonio Greer for the Pitt Panthers. Touchdown as they level the score up. 7-7, to seven. pick it with an absolute dart to the corner where the only man who could bring it in was Greer. He does. That's his first career touchdown reception, and the Panthers tie the game 7-7. Seven, seven. McSorley's going to hand the ball off to Barkley. He splits out wide. Great carry from the senior runner who had 10,083 yards on the ground last year and 19 touchdowns, a total of 25 last year. Was in the Heisman race, and he should be this year as well as he's already got seven touchdowns. He picks up ten, and it's a Penn State first down. And they'll follow up that with a 15-yard out to DeAndre Tompkins and another first down. McSorley moving the ball with absolute ease here. It's another handoff to Barkley. This time he's taken down in the backfield. It looked like it was Dwayne Hendricks breaking into the backfield. We'll remember Hendricks last year, a four-sack performance in the victory at State College over Penn State. And he's looking to replicate another performance like that. But Irvin Charles with his fourth grab already. Sets up third and three now for the Nittany Lions. McSorley's back to pass. Pressure. He gets the ball. It's DeAndre Tompkins. It's a missed tackle. I think that was Ma uh, Dane Jackson who wasn't able to bring down Tompkins. Paris Ford brings him down, but not after a 22-yard gain into the red zone. McSorley finds his man. That is Juwan Johnson on an eight-yard grab before brought down by uh Dane Jackson and McSorley now 7 of 7 on the day. Second and two. He's back to pass. Plenty of time. Looks and it's Juwan Johnson. Should have had a touchdown, but the slippery football escapes his grasp and it's going to be third and two now for the Nittany Lions. So McSorley, shotgun. Barkley protecting for him. He looks, finds a man in the corner. It's Irvin Charles. Another drop for the Nittany Lions. Two crucial drops on what would have been surely touchdown passes. And now fourth and two from the 10. And Penn State's going to go for it. So both of these teams going for the jugular early on. McSorley on the read option. He is stuffed. He's brought down the backfield. That's Paris Ford. Not fooled by the read option. He busts up the play in the backfield. McSorley's down. And the Panthers are ecstatic. Nard Doozy is fired up on the sidelines, and the Panthers will take the ball over on downs at their own 12-yard line. Darren Hall, two yards on the opening handoff. His uh, second carry of the game, he's still at about negative two yards, so he'll look to rectify that as the game moves forward. But second and eight now, Pickett throwing underneath. He's found Trey Tipton, picks up about five yards, does the junior receiver, and it'll set up third and two for the Panthers. As we come to the end of the first quarter, your Pitt Panthers and the Penn State Nittany Lions tied at seven in a ranked matchup here at Heinz Field. We'll see you for the second quarter. So Pickett now in the offset eye formation on third and two is going to hand the ball off. It's Quadri Olsen. No blocking is able to find that man, and it is going to be Manny Bowen into the backfield taking down Olsen, and the Panthers will have to punt the ball away. So Penn State opening up in the five-wide formation. McSorley feels the pressure from Artis Scott, but he gets the ball away. That's DeAndre Tompkins for 13 yards and a first down. 
So first and 10 now, McSorley, read option, doesn't hand it off to Barkley, who was smothered in the backfield. Instead, he takes it himself, but Kaiser Artiscott brings him down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So Penn State, the rushing attack when they give the ball to Barkley seems to be successful, but McSorley has not done much on these read options so far. He tucks it himself that time, picks up three, setting up third and seven. He's been moving the ball fantastically. His only incompletions have come on a couple drops by his receivers. Until that point, he's forced to chuck it away as the Panthers bring the heat, and Penn State will be forced into now what looks like a 48-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and it is nowhere near good. I don't know if it was a bad hold that it slips away, but the Penn State kicker is not able to do anything with it, and that's a missed field goal, and the Panthers will take the ball over at their 32. Pick it in the play action. Now he dumps it off. That's Quadri Olison, who's leveled in the backfield after a negative one-yard reception, setting up now third and ten for the Panthers after a one-yard carry from Darren Hall. Hall's still in the game as a sidecar to pick it. Three wide to his left. He drops back, looks to pass. The pressure comes. It's nearly intercepted. Koa Farmer knocks it away and should have arguably had an interception, but the Panthers will have to punt the ball away, and the Nittany Lions will get great field position here at the Panthers 43. It's Barkley on the handoff. He's wrapped up by what looks like Dennis Briggs in the secondary, but not after he does enough to get the Nittany Lions first down. So McSorley finds his man Barkley again. Salim Brightwell brings him down after seven, and Barkley now up to a good healthy chunk of yardage after about four or five touches this game. Second three, McSorley a little pump fake on the wide receiver screen there. It never materializes for him, and he's forced to throw the ball away, setting up third and three. So dual running back formation. It's Miles Sanders in the backfield with Barkley as McSorley drops back to pass. It's a screen. That's Dwayne Hendricks getting his hand up, knocking it away. They're not able to find Barkley, and Penn State will punt the ball away. And after a touchback, the Panthers take over at their own 20. Aston goes in motion here from a heavy set formation to the right-hand side. That's Quadri Olison taking the ball, picking up seven, and it'll be second and three now for the Panthers. Olison in the back foot again, takes a handoff from Kenny Pickett out of the shotgun. Good solid carry for the senior running back. Nine yards and another Panthers first downs. He's up to 43 yards here early in the first half. Second and seven now for the Panthers. Pickett in the ace formation. Three wide receivers as he's back to pass. Looks over the middle. That's Maurice F -f 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 French with a great grab for six yards. Third and one now for the Panthers. It's another shotgun formation. Hall in as sidecar. And he's going to take the handoff from Pickett. And he can't get to the marker. Darren Hall has found no running room today. Four carries for just two yards. And the Panthers, after a false start penalty, will have to take a fourth and five here. The ball's punted away by Eric Fox. And it's nearly lost. That was uh, Miles Sanders back on the return. He squibbed the ball away. That rain playing a factor, but Koa Farmer is on hand to scoop it up, and the Nittany Lions will maintain the ball, and they're going to make good use of his. That's Barkley gashing the Panthers through a huge hole through the center and the right guard gap there on the right-hand side. Picks up 23, and he's into Pitt Panthers territory. First and 10 for the Nittany Lions from the 49. Three uh, wide receiver formation for the Nittany Lions as McSorley's back to pass. He finds Polk, who heads on to the ball. It's Brandon Polk for a nine-yard catch and run setting up second and one for the Nittany Lions. McSorley in the gun, Barkley to his left. It's going to be what looks like an option. McSorley pitches it. Paris Ford, huge stiff form from Saquon Barkley. He's into the second level and down to the Panthers' 10-yard line. What a pitch from McSorley and then an unbelievable stiff form. That's Saquon Barkley ending Paris Ford and setting up the Nittany Lions with first and 10 from the 11. Miles Sanders, seven yards, makes it second and three for the Nittany Lions now with McSorley back to pass. Barkley does a great job picking up the blitz from the right-hand side. McSorley threads the needle, and that's a touchdown. And McSorley with now his 66th career touchdown pass. An unbelievable career for the Penn State senior quarterback. And the Nittany Lions are able to take a 14-7 advantage with just under three minutes to play here in the first half. Pickett's going to pitch it. That's the freshman Lees. Gets outside, only picks up two on the sweep there. He's got two carries for five yards now. Second and eight, bunch formation to Pickett's right as he's back to pass. Sees nobody, rolls out himself, gets to the sideline. A little bit of a late hit there, you could argue, from Koa Farmer. But Pickett does get out, saving the clock and setting up third and three for the Panthers now. 
Under center is Pickett, but he's back to pass. Looks over the middle. He's got his tight end, Greer, Antonio Greer, his second catch of the day. That picks up nine, and that's a first down for the Panthers as they try and run the two-minute drill here. Minute and a half to go as Pickett hands the ball off in the shotgun to Olsen. Fights off a tackle. He's able to somehow spin and maneuver his way forward for a pickup of two, saving the Panthers from a big loss. But the clock continues to tick as the Panthers save their timeouts. Minute five to go as Pickett's in the shotgun. Rolls out to his right. Plenty of time. Looks across his body. Nearly intercepted again. That's Amani Oruwarie able to knock the ball down in the secondary. And it's third and eight for the Panthers. Pickett rolls out flush from the pocket again. He throws underneath. That's Aaron Matthews. Does just enough to get the first down. Eight is what he needed. Eight is what he got. And the Panthers keep the chains moving out to their own 43. Picking the shotgun again. Looks. It's another underneath route. Nothing deep for the Panthers right now is very clear. Pickett goes underneath. That's Arujo Lopes. Picks up six before the Panthers use a timeout. Another five receiver set as Pickett finally decides to air it out and it's knocked down. Great defense defending by Zach McPherson to knock the ball away and the Panthers will face third and four. Three wide to pick to the wide side of the field as Pickett rolls out, sets his feet, throws, nearly intercepted again. A dangerous pass from Kenny Pickett. Koa Farmer is able to deflect the ball away, and that will do it for the first half. The Penn State Nittany Lions in a tight-fought battle right now. They've been on the verge of scoring but haven't done so. Lead 14-7 over your Pitt Panthers here at Heinz Field. So we look at the halftime stats, Penn State moving the ball with ease, both through the air and on the ground, 143 yards passing from McSorley, 92 rushing yards primarily from the legs of Saquon Barkley, and Penn State, to be honest, they have a missed field goal, uh, a couple missed opportunities in the red zone where they could have easily taken a bigger advantage as they went for it on fourth down, weren't able to score, and so the Panthers remain in this game, and we'll see if they can hang on and pull the upset here in the second half. We'll see you there at Heinz Field. So we welcome you back to the Pitt Panthers Football Network for the second half as the Penn State Nittany Lions lead your Pitt Panthers 14-7 here at Heinz Field. And the Nittany Lions will take the ball to open the second half. And Trace McSorley holds on to the read option and picks up 12 yards to take Penn State out to the 39-yard line. First and 10 now, McSorley's going to hand the ball off. It's Saquon Barkley. He's brought down by a combination of what looked like Philippi Motley and Paris Ford. Barkley now up to 97 yards on the ground on just eight carries. They need to get the ball in his hands more if Penn State wants to pull away from this matchup. It's going to be McSorley on the screen. He finds DeAndre Tompkins pushed out by Kaiser Artis Scott for another Nittany line first down as they march into Panthers territory. McSorley in the shotgun again. He sends... Uh, looks like Charles in motion into the backfield. They run kind of a wide receiver option there. It's broken up in the backfield. That was Teron Coleman in there for the four-yard loss of McSorley, and it's second 14. McSorley throws the ball away there, not able to find what looked like Juwan Johnson on the out route, and it's going to set up third and very long for the Nittany Lions here. Shotgun look for McSorley. Two wide receivers to the near side, one out wide. He's back, plenty of time to pass. Throws it as he's hit, and he's unable to find any receiver there. Doesn't get within 10 yards of anybody, and the Nittany Lions will be forced to punt the ball away. But after a very good putt, the Panthers will take over at the 10-yard line. Quadri Olis in there picks up two yards, second and eight now for the Panthers. Pickett sets up in the shotgun. Four wide receiver set for the sophomore quarterback as he's back to pass. Plenty of time. The pocket collapses on him, though. And Pickett, unable to find a receiver, just blanket coverage from the Nittany Lions. And Kevin Givens brings him down on the sack. So third and 16, the Panthers bring in the very tight set as they just don't want to get caught with a potential safety here. Olison picks up six, and the Panthers will be forced to punt it away. Fourth and ten as if they didn't even move on that opening drive. The Nittany Lions start the ball off in Panthers territory already from the 44-yard line, and it's McSorley breaking one tackle before being brought down for a six-yard game. 
So second and four for the Nittany Lions. They send a tight end in motion to the middle of the field. McSorley changing the play now as the Panthers crowd the line of scrimmage. He's back, looks to pass. Great deflection. I think that was uh, Dennis Briggs in making the deflection, knocking the ball away. Setting up third and four. McSorley, though, looks to pass. Finds his man out wide. Great bit of composure from McSorley as the rush came in. He just stepped to his right, found DeAndre Tompkins, and connects for the first down. So it's McSorley. Back, fakes the handoff to Barkley. Instead, he's going to go to Tompkins, who picks up two yards on the screen. His eighth catch of the day already, only halfway into the third quarter. McSorley back to pass. Plenty of time again. Out wide. That's Irvin Charles. He can't bring it in. A huge drop. That's his second drop of the day. The third big drop on a potential either touchdown or huge gain for the Nittany Lions. And now they're going to need to convert on a long third and eight. McSorley finds Brandon Polk underneath. Ford brings him down. And it's going to be fourth and five, setting up another long field goal. 47 yards this time for the Nittany Lions kicker. The ball is up. He looks like he's just short. It lands on the end line of the end zone, and it's another missed field goal and another missed opportunity for the Nittany Lions. Those drops could come back to haunt them if the Panthers can somehow jumpstart their offense here in the second half. They're not going to do it with Darren Hall there. He picks up nothing, and it's second and 10. Now pick it on the read option. Breaks two tackles. He's lucky to even get any yardage there. He picks up two. Should have been a five-yard loss in the backfield. Great battle from the quarterback to just get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and seven. Now bunch formation to his right. Pickett sits back. He throws. He's intercepted. He was looking for a Rujo Lopes. Instead, it's Manny Bowen, the linebacker, sitting back in zone coverage, reads the pass, takes the ball away, and it's going to be Penn State ball deep in pit territory already. A costly mistake from Kenny Pickett. Pat Narduzzi not happy as the Nittany Lions take over on the Panthers' 33-yard line. McSorley, another little screen there. He finds Irvin Charles. This time he's got to stick him on the gloves, and he brings the ball in for six, setting up second and four. Barkley not getting a ton of the ball here in the second half. McSorley's going to fake the handoff to him this time, go on the read option, picks up the first. Paris Ford comes over and makes the tackle, but on after McSorley rumbles up the seam for 11 yards, setting up a first down. He's back to pass. Panthers bring a little bit of a corner blitz off the edge. McSorley does a good job getting the ball out to Nick Bowers for a five-yard gain, second and five. Back in kind of a, a, a pistol-ish formation. McSorley able to draw what looked like a Panther offsides. I think that was defensive tackle Amir Watts with the mistake. And that's going to be a first down for the Nittany Lions. Great bit of signal calling from McSorley. Draws the man offsides, goes to snap the ball and it forces a first down on the penalty. So first and goal now from the seven. McSorley, read option, stuffed in the backfield. That was Dwayne Hendricks coming through and making the tackle. And just like that, the Nittany Lions running into the same woes that they felt earlier when they get into uh, the red zone territory. And that's another drop. I think that was Charles one more time. His third drop of the game. And it's third and goal from the nine now. McSorley back to pass. It's a screen. They find Barkley. He's not going to go anywhere. That's Salim Brightwell, the junior middle linebacker, bringing him down for the loss. And it's going to be a field goal attempt for Penn State. They're already 0 for 2 on field goal attempts in this game. That one's up. It's just inside the right upright. And the Nittany Lions push their lead to two scores, 17 to 7. So the Panthers doing very well defensively. They're getting a bit fortuitous with some of the drops from the Nittany Lions. But if they can break off a couple of big games, they'll be right back in business keeping this game close. And that's the start of it. Quadrioles in 13 yards as he gets outside finds the edge, and picks up a first down for the Panthers. Aston in motion. It's another handoff to Olsen. It looks like they're going to ride that hot hand quadri Olsen as he spins, flips, and wriggles his way for 10 yards and another Panthers first down. Olsen looking very solid here in the second half as the Panthers finally are able to move out of the shadow of their own end zone. Pick it on kind of a broken play action play. He looked like he had Aaron Matthews across the middle and the ball just hits George Aston right in the head. So it's going to be an incompletion now. Second and 10. Pickett rolls out. He's got a little bit of space. He's not going to get the first down. He's brought down from behind but does pick up seven. It's going to be third and three now for the Panthers from the 35 yard line. 
Aston in kind of a tight end position. Motions into the backfield. It's a handoff to Olsen. He finds plenty of running room. Nine yards for Olsen. I don't think he's run for anything less than nine on this drive. And the Panthers have a first down to 25. They hand off to Darren Hall, giving Olsen a break. And Hall doing like he's done all day. Just two yards. He's got six carries for four yards at this point in time. Olison's been the man. The Panthers will have to ride him the rest of the game. Pick it underneath. That's Rafael Arujo Lopes for a very short two-yard grab and a huge third and five. But we'll return for the fourth quarter with your Pitt Panthers trailing the Nittany Lions 17-7 but driving. Can they stage a memorable comeback in this historic rivalry? Tune in to the fourth quarter to find out. So we come back here for the fourth quarter at Heinz Field. Your Panthers trailing 17-7 with Pickett now dropping back to pass on third and five. Looks underneath. He's found George Aston for five, but he is stopped just short of the first down marker, and the Panthers are going to choose to take the points. They have one of those the most reliable kickers in college football in Jay Bump. They're going to let him knock this ball through the upright to cut the Nittany Lions' advantage back to 17-10 to in a single possession because Penn State hasn't shown a propensity to score here in the second half either. All they've got is three points, and with drops like that, that's Irvin Charles with his third or fourth drop of the game. He was gone if he catches that ball. Trace McSorley has to be livid with some of these drops. He does retain his composure, though, on the read option. McSorley does fantastically before being dragged down by Celine Brightwell. That's a big gain, though, out to the Panthers' 43-yard line. So McSorley doing his absolute best to give the Penn State Nittany Lions a chance to win. Irvin Charles, two-yard grab there, but he missed what could have been a 70-yard gain. He's got six catches on the day, but he might have six drops at this point, the way the game has gone. Who knows if these will be something Penn State will rue. And that's Joan Johnson this time. Another drop. Is it the wet football playing havoc on the conditions for these players here? But it's another drop. The Nittany Lions could be up to 40 points at this point with all the drops they've had. Great defense that time. Dane Jackson gets in the way of a pass. Fourth and eight, and the Nittany Lions will have to punt it away. But who knows what could happen if they don't miss two surefire potential touchdown passes deep in the Panthers' secondary with critical drops. And Quadri Olsen's going to make them pay. That's a nine-yard run to the outside, setting up the Panthers with second and one from their own 29. But they have a lot of field to cover now. 71 yards still to get to the end zone to try and tie this game. But Olsen's going to do his absolute best to try and squelch that deficit picks up uh, seven yards on the carry there and he's up over 100 for the day 102 yards on 17 carries for the senior running back it's another handoff here he breaks it outside good block from Aston it looked like and Olsen picks up a solid seven Koa Farmer with his 12th tackle of the game Kenny Pickett in the I formation now drops back to pass Got Quadri Olsen on a little angle route underneath, finds him for three, takes a big hit, but he stays in the game after the first down for the Panthers. So shotgun look now, it's Pickett, hands the ball off to Olsen again, fights his way forward for about five, and the Panthers are out to midfield and into Penn State territory. 114 yards on the ground for the senior running back. Now they sub in the other senior back, Darren Hall. Pickett, though, back to pass. Plenty of time. Looks, finds Maurice French, who takes a big hit underneath, but holds onto the ball. Picks up four. It's going to be third and one now for the Panthers. It's a handoff. It's Darren Hall. He hasn't done much of anything all day. Gets only a single yard, but thankfully that's all the Panthers need, and that's a first down into the Penn State 45-yard line with just over six minutes to play in the game. Pick it now. He's got Aston in motion. It's a handoff. It's Olison. This time, it's his first run of under about seven yards in maybe the entire second half. He's brought down after a single yard gain. Second and nine for the Panthers. I formation. Play action. Pick it. Looks like a screen. He's not able to get the ball. Darren Hall was blown up in the backfield, and so the screen never set itself up. Pick it had nowhere to go and takes a huge sack. And it's third and 19. The Panthers back on the wrong side of midfield. Pick it. Back to pass. Over the top. Looking for Lease. He brings it in. But he's out of bounds. Paul Lease can't bring it in. The Panthers forced to punt it away. And the passing game has really offered very little to the Panthers so far. Pick it. 13 of 22 for only 89 yards so far. But thankfully, the defense is keeping them in the game. That's Sean Wolfgang into the backfield. Brings down McSorley. Seven-yard loss. Second and 17 for the Nittany Lions now. Plenty of time. McSorley back to pass. Underneath, he's got Jawan Johnson. He's brought down by Sean Idowu with the tackle. Third and six now for a Penn State Nittany Lions team that is very poor on third downs today. Only two for nine. And it's going to go to two for ten as Irvin Charles brings in the ball, but he can't get to the first down marker. Paris Ford 
and Dennis Briggs, it looked like, conjoining on the tackle there, and the Nittany Lions forced to punt the ball away. So the Panthers with possibly one final chance here to level the score up with just over three and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Olison takes the ball for five yards, second and five now for the Panthers on their own 30-yard line. Shotgun for Pickett. He's back to pass. Looks. It's another underneath route. It's Antonio Greer, the tight end. His third catch of the day picks up four, and it's going to be third and one for the Panthers. Pickett just 93 yards through the air. Nothing much doing for the Panthers. But on third and one to give, it's George Aston. He fights his way forward for four yards, and the Panthers are able to convert, move the sticks with two and a half minutes to play. Still over 60 yards to go, and they're not going to get much with this one. It's Paul Lease. The freshman receiver on the jet sweep. But wait a minute. That is a personal foul face max. So what goes from about a five, six-yard gain for the, the freshman receiver lease turns into a huge mistake by senior corner John Reed. A face max, pe pe max penalty gives the Panthers 15 yards. And just like that, they're into Penn State territory with two minutes to play. Pick it now. Looks for a shovel pass. That's knocked down. Defended well. Second and ten now for the Panthers. Pickett now comes out in the ace formation with Darren Hall behind him. Tight end and two receivers to the near side right. He drops back. Plenty of time looking to pass and it's another sack. Eight yard loss for Kenny Pickett. Jake Cooper breaks through and brings down the Panthers quarterback. So five wide set. It's two down territory at this point or four down territory. They need to get something on this play. Pickett, nice little touch pass over the top. Finds a Rujo Lopes for an 11 yard grab. But this could be the ball game. Now minute and a half to play. Panthers with only two timeouts. They need to convert here because a stop against the Penn State offense could be very unlikely. So fourth and seven, five wide. Pickett back. He rolls out. Fires it. He's found Trey Tipton. First down, nine yards. Kenny Pickett set his feet, waited for that small window to open up, and he finds Trey Tipton. So that's a big-time throw from the sophomore quarterback. Five wide set now again. Pickett, plenty of time in the pocket. Does his best. Finds Aaron Matthews for two yards. Doesn't take a sack is the big thing there. So second and eight now for the Panthers. Another five wide set. Pickett in the shotgun. Three to his right, two to his left. Maurice French in motion. Plenty of time. Pick it over the middle. Great throw. He's got Maurice French. He's dragged down after a 26-yard catch. Pick it with the perfect touch. Finds French over the middle. The biggest pass of the day for the Panthers. And they are now on the four-yard line with 50 seconds to play. They're going to take their second timeout. First and goal from the four. They want to settle themselves, compose themselves, and also not leave too much time on the clock for the Nittany Lions to potentially take advantage of. First and goal. Aston in motion, two tight ends set to the right. It's a handoff. It's Quadri Olsen. He fights his way forward. He's into the end zone. It's a Pitt Panthers touchdown. And just like that, we've got a whole new ball game. 48 seconds to play, and the Panthers have tied up this matchup. But that's just enough time for this explosive Penn State offense to potentially seal away a victory. So four wide set for McSorley. He's back to pass over the middle. He's got Brandon Polk. Missed tackle from Brightwell. And that's dragged down about the 50-yard line with 40 seconds to play. So Penn State probably another 25 yards and they're in field goal range. 39 seconds to play. McSorley back out wide. He's found Irvin Charles again. Fights off a tackle from Brightwell and picks up six with 30 seconds to play. But Penn State with the most absurd clock management I've ever seen. They just let the play clock run down. The game clock goes down to two seconds before they even run a play. They have three timeouts. And look at this. McSorley finds Charles for 18 yards, but time's run out. How James Franklin mismanaged that situation so badly and cost his Nittany Lions a chance to win the game. If they get that one playoff even, they can kick a game-winning field goal. And now as it is, their offense doesn't score. They've been struggling the whole second half here. And with the Panthers winning the toss, Penn State has to come right back on the field on offense and try and score and put the Panthers on their heels. So an incredible turn of events here as we start off overtime. Each team gets a chance from the 25 to score. Penn State, McSorley, back to pass on first down. Throws out wide to the corner. It's intercepted. And just like that, DeMar Hamlin takes the ball the other way. He gets around McSorley. He's going to be brought down. He won't score. But just like that, the entire tide of the game is turned. Penn State goes from nearly having a chance to kick a game-winning field goal if they had managed the clock well to instead now having to stop the Panthers from scoring at all or they lose this game. Unbelievable clock management. James Franklin will have nightmares about this one 
if Pitt's able to come away with the victory, to hand off to Darren Hall up the middle on the first play of overtime for the Panthers offense, gets a yard setting up second and nine. Shotgun now. Pickett is flanked by the man of the hour, Quadri Olsen, scored the tying touchdown. He's got about 120 yards already today. He fights his way forward for eight, and it's going to be third and one for the Panthers. They come in a tight formation, one wide receiver out to the boundary left. I formation to handoff. It's George Aston. The fullback fights his way forward. He picks up about nine, and the Panthers are down to the Penn State six-yard line. First and goal. Tight end set, single back. It's Quadri Olsen. Aston in a tight end look to the left. He's going to motion right. Pick it under center. He hands it off. It's Olsen. He's off to right. Oh, he can't shed a tackle there. Probably loses a yard, and the Panthers are going to have second and goal from the seven. Olison in as the lone setback in the shotgun next to Kenny Pickett. He's going to take the handoff from Pickett. There's a big hole up the middle. Fights his way. Stumbles. He's in. He's into the end zone. Quadri Olison and the Pitt Panthers are on the prowl tonight. And they've come away with an upset victory over the number nine hated rival Penn State Nittany Lions. Olison stumbles his way into the end zone to cap off an unbelievable performance. A couple of touchdowns for the senior running back. Just an unbelievable victory. Trace McSorley and the Nittany Lions absolutely devastated that huge turnover, costing them the game. But Quadrioles and man of the hour, 137 yards, two touchdowns, an absolute workhorse. And the Pitt Panthers come away with the win. Who can forget Kenny Pickett, that huge pass over the middle, Maurice French. Quadrioles and an unbelievable display of running. But really the story for the Nittany Lions is those drops. And then their game management at the end. So many mistakes that they could have done without and possibly came away with a victory. Four or five huge careless drops. A huge interception. Poor clock management at the end of the fourth quarter. It allowed the Panthers to hang around. And when you make that many mistakes on the road, it could end up coming back to bite you. And because of that, your Pitt Panthers come away with the win. Thank you so much for watching. Hail to Pitt. The final score, Pitt Panthers 23. Penn State Nittany Lions on the Pitt Panthers Football Network.